Welcome to FTC Recap, where you get the breakdown and discussion of what's going on in the FTC community. For first updates now, I'm Ishan Oberoi, and joining me is Peter. Hi. Uh, we'd like to welcome our guest, Jackson Eisenberg, who is a contributor for FTC Lib. If you've got any questions for him throughout the show, make sure to tag at first, date, first updates now in the chat, and we'll be sure to get to them. In the latter half of the show, we'll have a discussion about software in FTC and FTC Lib. Let's, we got a lot to cover in this show, so let's jump right into our headlines. On August 2nd, the crew flying the SpaceX Dragon capsule landed back on Earth, making it the first successful manned mission going into space and coming back to U.S. soil, uh, from the U.S. soil, uh, since the space shuttle. Since Americans have been flying from Russia since the space shuttle to get to the International Space Station, but now they can go from Cape Canaveral, Florida, using the SpaceX Dragon capsule. This is part of an initiative to push commercialized space flight. The capsule landed in the ocean, but there are future plans to have uh, capsules land on land. Uh, what do you guys think about this? I thought it was pretty cool to watch this. I saw it live. I don't know. How, how did you guys react to this? Uh, admittedly, I saw it through people putting it on my Twitter timeline. Um, and I thought it was, once I got the full context of it, it was really cool actually. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to like future space missions, uh, and manned missions in the future, hopefully. Yeah. I got spammed with it on uh, discord, mostly from, uh, different servers. I was in like tech servers and when I saw it, I couldn't believe how quickly those things came out, uh, because most of the time when these happen, it takes a long time, but the amount of time between missions here is incredible. And I think that we're going to see a lot more in the future of this. Okay, so uh, moving on, team uh, 1526 out of Clifton, Virginia have released a really unique robot reveal. They designed their robot in Autodesk Inventor and then animated it entirely in Blender. This robot was designed after the season as a reflection of what they've learned. With FTC having increasingly advanced design practices in CAD, this type of robot reveal could be adopted by other teams and seen more in the future. Yeah, when I saw this, like, this was by far the most realistic robot reveal that I've seen that's not a robot reveal. Uh, like, I've seen some yeah. other teams try to do it simulations in the past, but nothing compares to this. Anything you saw, Jackson, that you liked? Oh, I think that uh, the skill that went into it was incredible. And the guy who made it, uh, we've been talking on Discord, and he certainly knows his stuff. Like, he <laughs> not only is he good with things like rendering and design, but also software. And I think that those are some very useful skills that can be used hand in hand. And I myself have recently been getting into CAD and rendering as well. And I think that. Together, you can uh, have a very well-rounded team as well as just knowledge in general. Awesome. Uh, also, the new FLL game replay was launched yesterday. You can check out our archive of an analysis on it on our YouTube channel. It seems like a pretty difficult game with a lot of moving elements. They're bringing back hanging to FLL, so this could be the first year that we see hanging in FLL, FTC, and FRC if they include it in the ultimate goal season. Uh, overall, the game seems challenging, but has some simple elements for rookies, which I think is a great thing. You guys take a look at the game? Uh, a bit, but... um. Honestly, I feel like they're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. No, no it's, FTC, they're going to going dis, to disclude us from the hang. The hang yeah. party. It's not going to happen. Unfortunately. Didn't you see uh, the pull up in the like the teaser trailer where they had somebody working out with a pull up? It's a, it's a stretch. <laughs> it's I think is. the no um, weight limit kind of cancels that out. Can't have 90 pound robots in FTC I mean, hanging off of those parts. I mean, they had that in rescue, right? I had at least 60 pound robots hanging on bars they had no weight limit that year so we'll have to see i'm still having my fingers crossed i think i think we'll have a hang in ftc uh but we'll have to see yeah uh so since we're talking about programming libraries today it only makes sense to include it in our headlines easy open cv a library for the open from the open ftc team has been updated it includes some additional support for webcams as well as support for manual control over sensor parameters 
The more these accessible programming resources are available, the more teams will be able to improve their own, prog own programming and vision uh, for use during the season. So what do you guys think of uh, these, like, these resources and uh, you know, becoming more available, teams having more access to them? Yeah, I think our team at least has been using a version of OpenCV for the past three or four years and uh, it being more accessible and especially a lot of what op uh, easy OpenCV has been doing is targeting rookie teams to make it easier to import the library and easier to use. I really like the direction that they're going and I really think that a lot of teams will benefit from it. Yeah, EOCV is probably one of uh, the better libraries uh, that I've seen out there. Uh, my team has used it for, I think, we just started using it this year, uh, some of the teams that I mentor. And honestly, I think that the features it has and the way that it connects uh, OpenCV so easily to the FTC software and makes it easier for teams to grab access to the phone camera or webcam, grab the images and process them so so quickly. Uh, I think that this is probably the gr one of the greater developments I've seen out there. Yeah, for sure. All right, and FTC alum Joshua Peterson from FTC team 8680 Crack and Pinion designed this differential mechanism drive that uses three motors to control four wheels. Using differentials, each motor controls a separate function, whether it be one for forward, and backwards, one for sideways, and one for rotation. This is part of a side project for a robot that uses an Arduino Nano as its controller. And looking at this, it's pretty sweet. Like, I love looking at mechanics, and he really did an awesome job. Uh, it doesn't use the FTC control system, but that's fine. I mean, he's just showing the coolness of robotics. I don't know what you guys thought about it. Uh, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really cool, and... Um... I, like, had some contact with him while he was making this, and, like, it was really interesting. He, like, started with, like, the Lego differentials, so, like, he was trying to buy a ton, and then he just realized it was easier to 3D print his own, um, and, yeah, this was, like, a combination for, like, it took a while to make, um, and, yeah, it's just really amazing to see it functional. Um, it shows, like, how to continue robotics in a way, like, what stuff you can do once you graduate out of FTC or FTRC. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that this was, uh, I saw this video and I thought that the way that it was made and designed reminded me of how even though uh, some of us are middle schoolers or high school students in FTC, some of the things we learn can carry over into uh, the future in other fields uh, and other technical fields and areas as well. And I think that that idea and concept is what drives me and interests a lot of people in all of FIRST to continue engineering in STEM or even things related to robotics, such as business and outreach uh, in the future. And I think that those are probably one of the better aspects of FIRST. Yeah, one of the cool things about this is it's pretty much programming using hardware. Right, because now with it, you just control forward, backwards, and left and right instead of having to control individual motor powers. So I thought it's like kind of creating your own hardware firmware. Uh, Want to move on to the new book that was released? Yeah, so uh, published two days ago, Coach Alan Smith has written a book designed for students to, uh, as the book states in its title, learn Java for FTC. Breaks down the basics of learning Java and uh, learning FTC programming. Puts it into a, digest into a digestible book, starting with like a basic Java, and then use going on to show how it can be applied to FTC um, and op modes. It gets into like quite a bit of depth. Um, it's like 173 pages. Uh, like FTC Lib and previously mentioned Easy Open CV, this is another resource that can be used for rookie teams and to train uh, future programmers, uh, which is the goal of it, and just give them a place to start. So. What do you guys think of this? I yeah. thought it was pretty cool. One of one of the first books I read uh, when going into FTC was I think it was like Secrets, Tips, and Tricks uh, oh. by like a team yeah. in uh, New Jersey. Almost everybody, like a lot of people, have read that <laughs> book. And yeah. so it's cool to see more FTC books being released. Uh, this guy was awesome as he published the book on GitHub. It's a PDF for people to use, and then he also has it on Amazon for a paperback if a team wants like hard copies. Yeah, I think that resources that uh, take all of these aspects, concepts, and things that you can do with programming and software and FTC and bring them into one 
consolidated resource uh, is extremely important in FTC. That's one of the reasons why FTC Lib was created in the first place, was because of all the variety uh, and things that are out there that you can use. And most of the time when you're looking up tips and tricks and other resources and guides or FTC, you have to read a large amount of papers, such as what I needed to do for things like odometry and other mathematic concepts. I needed to read multiple sources, but if we could one day just consolidate everything into one guide, then I think that that is one step towards bringing more teams to uh, a higher competitive level. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.